This video is sponsored by NVIDIA Studio and SCAN. Big thank you for all the support on last week's video. I thought we'd go right ahead and drop another Guide Runner episode. This week's artwork was taken from the recent video Sweet Oblivion over on the Phase Runner Music channel. If you're looking for some ambient music to create or study to, be sure to subscribe. Subscribe. Keeping with the sci-fi theme, we're going to focus on composition and lighting, along with an interesting story element. And stick around to the end of the video because I'll be revealing this week's one to watch. Sorry. Okay, before we run it, let's hear from the sponsor of this video. For this video, we'll be using a 16-inch Lenovo IdeaPad provided by Scan. This is an entry-level NVIDIA Studio laptop with an RTX 3050 that will accelerate a whole array of creative applications like Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom, Blender, DaVinci Resolve, and many more. The RTX GPU accelerates these creative applications, speeding up your workflow and enabling even more features. For Photoshop, there are over 30 GPU-accelerated features, such as Blur Gallery, Liquid and Smart Sharpen, enabling artists to modify and adjust images smoothly and quickly. The RTX GPU also accelerates the neural filters that enable complex adjustments like when using Smart Portrait in just seconds, while Super Resolution uses AI to upscale images with higher quality than traditional methods, intelligently enlarging photos while maintaining clean edges and preserving those important details. And if you're wondering where you can get some hardware with NVIDIA Studio, Scan is one of the UK's biggest PC components and hardware shops that sell a range of pro audio, video and hardware for creatives. Scan is also one of the biggest resellers of NVIDIA Studio certified products in Europe. Be sure to check out their website where you can find a whole range of NVIDIA Studio certified laptops and desktops built to meet your creative needs. Links in the description. Okay, let's run it. Right, so we're back again with a slightly less complex piece, keeping the number of assets used around the 12 mark. As I've already mentioned, I'll be showing you how I created the image Sweet Oblivion. I gotta say, I'm enjoying creating these simpler pieces of art for a change. The edit process definitely goes a lot smoother with fewer elements involved. My uh, layers panel has never looked this neat. Kicking things off with this smoke stock photo, which will serve as our background, establishing a textured base to work on top of. I'm just altering the brightness and colors slightly. We're then going to drop in this abstract mineral texture, an image I've used quite a lot recently. It has some cool qualities and I've used it for a bunch of things like wind and water effects or even magic-y stuff. I want it to have vertical lines so I'm just cutting out a chunk and distorting it to make that happen and then scrolling through the layer blending modes until I find a look that appeals to me and lowering the opacity slightly. Let's hide that for a second and build up the light in the center of our image using a large soft round brush and setting the blending mode to screen. That should help intensify the light here. And we'll also do something similar at the top. Let's duplicate that abstract layer one more time just to build up the effects in the center a little bit more. So we've got a bunch of rocks we need to incorporate. The first step is positioning them around the image. I know the characters for this piece will take center stage, so I'm just placing them on the outside using different sizes and angles. It seems like a mindless task, but we need to be careful to make sure we don't cluster up a particular area of the artwork. Now, normally I'd recommend applying adjustment layers to the individual rocks so that there's more control over the specific edits you can make to each one. In this case, however, to save time, I'm going to throw all the rocks into a folder and then clip adjustment layers to that folder so that they apply to every rock in the folder. Did that make sense? I think that made sense. 
I'll start with selective color, exposure for the shadows, and hue and saturation for some highlights and more color. I want things to look a little bit more chaotic, so we're going to add in some smaller rocks and debris, just scattering them around the image, matching the lighting and colours where needed, and erasing any unwanted parts. There's enough to work with on this one asset, I can just duplicate and use different sections. Our large rocks are all very dark and appear too close to the camera. We need to simulate some atmospheric perspective. So for that, I'll create a color fill layer, set it to screen and matching the bright blue off in the background, clip it to the rocks and then start painting in the light where I basically want the rocks to appear off in the distance. Okay, enough of those rocks, let's get these characters in there. I love this asset, the idea for this entire piece came to life after seeing this one stock image. I immediately pictured these two astronauts on some distant planet or rock, experiencing some kind of cataclysmic event with only each other to hold on to. Huh, it's kind of got that Armageddon vibe to it. Right, so we need to plant them in the scene, get the colours and lighting to match up, so cue a lot of adjustment layers. I'm not the most efficient with these, I'm just going by eye, creating them as I see fit, so let's crack on with that. Our background needs populating with a bunch more rocks and debris, so I've got this nice grungy asset which we can place behind our existing rocks, and then just alter the colours and lighting to match the scene. Repeating the same steps on the other side, and reusing the asset one more time just to hint at a few more shapes and forms along the top center.
And let's just emphasize the beginnings of this crack of light, which will help draw the viewer's eye towards the center and upwards. And just blur it slightly. Not too far from the final image reveal now, applying some motion blur to the rocks to give them a bit of movement and working in some... This week's one to watch is SB Editing. SB Editing's unique fantasy images and beautifully blended Star Wars posters quickly caught my eye in the community feed. From the vivid colour palettes to those almost Van Gogh-like clouds, SB Editing is definitely a one to watch. To be in with a chance to get featured, simply use the hashtag #PhaseRunnerCommunity when posting your next artwork, and hopefully you'll be the next one to watch. Another thank you to Nvidia and Scan for sponsoring the video. I primarily used Photoshop on the Lenovo IdeaPad, and for an entry-level Nvidia Studio laptop, this thing really shines. As you already know, I like to use a lot of layers and assets when creating, but not once did I feel like the idea pad was struggling to keep up with my moves. This is a great pick for anyone looking to up their Photoshop game. Be sure to click the link in the description and check out their range. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more Photoshop content.